Welcome back guys, Angry Bike Mechanic. I am doing a quick overhaul on an IFP on the DPX2. The IFP goes bad really quick, so usually when I do an air can service on this, I am doing a full IFP service and full overhaul can wait. All right, this assu video assumes that you just wanna know what's going on or that you've already had experience working on Fox rear shocks. So step-by-step -step instructions are available on the Fox website. Link is in the description below. Hear that sound? Sounds literally sounds like aerated oil passing through a port. Well, it's aerated oil. It's called cavitation, and it happens on the the DPX2 for no reason at all. Evacuating the nitrogen can be dangerous. Do not try this at home. Um, we're not in this sport with all this expensive gear to just sit around. Um, Oh, there's this. Hear that hiss? Okay, so there was some leftover pressure. So that's good. It's good there was some, some nitrogen still in there. All right, this next step is done very slowly to avoid because losing parts. Nitrogen in the oil, and the oil hasn't been, has not been leaking into the nitrogen chamber, just nitrogen into the oil, causing the cavitation. The oil is under pressure while it's being aerated. So this should leak out some pink fizz. Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe the offset. Oh, there we go. Well, it's not pink, but there it is. That's the R3. Um, that's the R3 fluid leaking out uh, with the nitrogen. This is not normal. But however, on these shocks, it's totally normal. That is a lot of aeration. Every bit of pressure must be removed in order to safely complete this next step. Basically, I put the, uh, the needle nut back in and gives me something to, and I'm, I'm actually holding the needle nut against, um, as an, in a tightened position. And I'm just tight, now I'm just unscrewing that little guy. And that just loosened it just enough. I'll still be able to unthread my needle nut um, so I still want to have that out of there. So get that out and then go back to unthreading the sky. Oh, that was dusty, eh? Um, as with all suspension, I clean as I go. I don't want any dirt in my work area. If you ever wonder why your mechanic has a beer belly, so we don't ride our bikes. We're too busy working on yours. After thoroughly cleaning the interface there, it's time to slowly and gently depress the piggyback cap or the IFP back and remove the retaining clip. Now the retaining clip is just a, a mostly a steel ring. So you just need to push down one side of it and the other side you can just work out with your finger once it's in the proper position. This helps to avoid scratching that in inside surface. So be very gentle, be very slow and deliberate in your movements here. This is not an area where you can afford to mess up. And once you get that ring out, gently remove it. And now I go back with a Q-tip and make sure I get all the finer dust particles out of that area before I remove the piggyback cap. So this ensures that everything can stays seal or clean as I remove the seals, preventing damage to other, other seals and maybe other interfaces on the aluminum hard and die surfaces. And you can see as I pull this out, it actually has a little bit of dirt buildup on that O-ring. And take note, that IFP should be way down in there. And that's a manifestation of how how much gas is actually in the oil. So clean up this IFP cap, or this piggyback cap, and I'm gonna set it aside. The next step is to remove the IFP itself. Removing the IFP is a couple steps. Um, I, the bleed screw in the center of the IFP itself is one and a half millimeter Allen key, and it's usually gently in there. And then gently remove the IFP itself by a little bit of wiggling, not too much. You don't want to exaggerate your movements too much. You just want to wiggle upon the seal, the O-ring itself. Um, you can see here, this is not the factory O-ring. So let's get rid of the oil. 
Now this oil is extremely aerated and that is basically nitrogen gas that's still residing in the oil uh, under no pressure. And then we need to just kind of clean things up a little bit as we go, clean that resi residual oil with a 91% isopropyl alcohol. Now I've removed the seal head and the shock body from the damper and uh, evacuated the oil from the damper or shock body. So now it's time to clean that up and it's time to introduce new oil into the system. You may be wondering if it's time to replace any other seals, but this shock is at 70 hours and does not need all those extra seals for the full overhaul. So we will probably do the full overhaul in another 70 hours when the IFP goes bad yet again. So this R3 oil is the factory oil and it works extremely well. So I pour that in the shock body and reinstall the shock body seal head. Now I go very gentle because you want as much oil to stay in there as possible. Make sure that the IFP is bottomed out on uh, the, uh, the dish plate. And then I slowly screw that by hand and then I use a wrench to set the torque. Now that again is available on the website, the Fox's website for step-by-step -step instructions. So I like to prime the damper circuits by pushing or compressing the shock a little bit, which forces some oil up into the compression and rebound circuits and drains out the bleed port in the, IF, in the IFP chamber or in the piggyback. The IFP is not installed yet. So now with the shock upside down, I begin to cycle some oil by cycling the shock into the piggyback. And I want to top off the piggyback a little bit, about 50%. And as I cycle it, air bubbles will start to work their way out. Now the R3 is self-purging, self-bleeding oil. So it's really nice. You don't have to use a vacuum necessarily in order to get this job done right. So gently cycle the, sh the shock body on the damper shaft. The idea behind this is to help purge air out of the damper circuits and throughout the system. So the next step would be to introduce a little bit more oil, install the IFP seal, the fresh IFP seal, and the IFP itself, and leave the IFP bleed screw <clears throat> out for the time being. Well, we need, we need to insert this IFP and have oil covering the upper surface so that oil is on both sides. That way, as you cycle the shock, you'll begin to see air go out through the bleed port there and it will draw an oil that's sitting on top back into the system. This is a pretty important step and you'll see this also on the Fox website. But be very gentle reinserting this. Um, it's really easy to mar up <clears throat> these internal surfaces if you're not very careful. So as I'm pushing it, you can see the oil push through the port there and now you can see there's a good bit of oil probably you know, 10 millimeters of oil. And as I cycle it, you can see the oil come in, out, but I think I'm past the point where uh, air is coming out. So it's time to reinstall the IFP bleed screw. And so then gonna, this is why I have what I'm gonna do, and it doesn't have to be crazy here. tight. And so it, it just starts to spin the IFP, seal, by the way. So IFP just be aware of that. In. Leave your oil in place um, on top because you're, you're gonna come back to, to cycling that again. We so need to go to the, the shock entirely. body and loosen or remove the needle nut screw and start to cycle the shock gently and slowly to purge air purge that air. is percolated in the oh. very top cavity Out. of the yeah. shock body. So in this process, obviously leave it inverted. As you can see, little teeny bubbles are starting to come out so as I cycle it's this. Not pushing back. And you want to repeat this process until you only see oil coming out. All this air out of the and top of once side, this shock you body. are only seeing oil coming out of so this port that, and the IFP bleed bleed port, then you can seal this thing up for good. So I seal things back off, and I go back. Um, to, and if I need to repeat this process over and over, I will. I'll actually remove the shock from the vise and spin it around and it's and uh, pull, mess around yeah. with it a little bit and tap it and try to get air bubbles out and then repeat this process. So once I get to a point where wow. this is looking good and there's no air thirsty. coming out, I fully extend the shock and I prepare to do a final assembly on, on this IFP and the piggyback. So we need to set the IFP height. What I'm going to do 
I usually just pour a teeny bit more oil in just for good reason, good measure. All right, so you have to remove the IFP screw, obviously, if you've been cycling the shock from the very top. But again, make sure all the air is out and we're gonna come back and set the IFP height. IFP height is, uh, is pretty important. Uh, unless you know advanced tuning techniques, you need to stick with the factory IFP height. So once that's set, you can seal it off with the bleed screw, the IFP bleed screw, and then it's nice to clean it out from residual oil. You don't have to go crazy. And then I put some slick honey on the inside. So the next step is to get the piggyback cap back into place. So I put some slick honey on that seal, on the, that cap. And note that I have the needle nut screw removed. I push that in just far enough that I can get that retaining clip in there nice and comfortably. And then I withdraw this cap back into place by using the needle nose pliers again. And again, this is according to the step-by-step -step instructions on the Fox website. So once that's back into place, I will gently put the needle nut screw back in and not, it doesn't have to be crazy tight, but we need to put this retainer cap on. If you don't have this retainer cap on, when you go to fill the nitrogen, it will just push the needle, the whole assembly will push into the IFP chamber, which is not what you need. So the next step, after meeting all the torque specs and all the oil specs and getting all the air out of your system, is time to do the nitrogen fill. Now this step is gonna be a little harder if you don't have the nitrogen tank, the safety needle and all that stuff. Uh, the technique for this is um, it's learned, so you might just have to have a shop do this or send it to a shop to do all of the work in order to make sure it's done right with proper continuity. So anyhow, I'm hand dynoing this shock so you can see that it's rebounding, but it's also quiet. I voiced over this and you wouldn't hear anything anyway, but it's important to remember that the, uh, the shock needs to sound like it's been rebuilt. All right, y'all, so that's that. Finish the assembly by installing new air seals, and you'll be set to go for another ride. And then when the DPX-2 does its failure again, it's time to see about a full overhaul where we replace all the O-rings everywhere. But, you know, that's a bit more expensive. Uh, in my shop, I charge $110 for this service with the air seals, not including shipping. So if you'd like to, check the link below and check out my website. Uh, it's pretty rudimentary. It is a bike mechanic website. So... Uh, thanks for checking it out. Um, hope you guys are entertained and kind of see how cool the process is with these shocks. Have a good one out there and happy trails.